my lovely, lovely imps. Today, I am going to be ranting about a number of things, including the fact that I am always so goddamn right. And by when I say I'm always so goddamn right, obviously I don't mean I'm literally always right. It just means that when I come on stream, I tend to put a lot of thought, effort, and time into the things that I say. And I tend to be a very careful person. And uh, let me just say, there's been a lot of times where I've been really goddamn right about topics. And I do not, do not even get close to the credit that I deserve for how fucking correct I am. Okay? Now there's a couple of different topics that I really feel like nailing that home on and ranting about. And the first one is the one that I actually titled this stream for, okay? And this is gonna be a little bit simple, okay? You're gonna be like, well, you know, mama, we knew you were right, but did you? Did you really? Because just the other day, you will all recall that, that we had a argument on this channel. There was a debate, the first debate that we've done in a long time. I used to do a lot of debates and I got tired of doing debates because the debate scene fucking sucked and the whole lot of drama happened. And also the debate scene as it existed, it no longer really exists at all, but the debate scene was basically hijacked, okay? It sucked. However, recently, I've been a little more open to debates, and we had a debate recently. We had a debate about Kanye West. And you might say, well, goodness, what did you fucking debate about? Well, you all know the answer, which is the fact that apparently I was being racist by, by making fun of Kanye West for being like hit, for espousing Hitler-esque uh, uh, behaviors, for being Hitler-like, for being a blitler, in fact. Uh, this debate went on really long and it generated a lot of discourse. Some people got mad at me, uh, some people thought I was right, but I just wanna talk about something that I was so fucking goddamn right about. And by the way, this is like a, um, it's like a, it's like a, it's like, you know that scene in SpongeBob? You know the one with the, hold on. Let me just, sh it's this right here. It's this fucking meme right here. This has been me on this fucking issue, okay? This has been me on the Kanye issue from the very beginning. Okay? And I just wanna show you what I'm talking about here. Because this was just the other day in Los Angeles, okay? I want you to take a look at this message right here, okay? This is a bunch of fascists doing literal Sieg Heils, okay? Liter a literal Sieg Heil, okay? They're literally Sieg Heiling Nazis in broad daylight on the highway in LA, okay? That says honk if you know, and then this sign says Kanye is right about the Jews. And then this says Goyim TV dot TV. And then it has two Bible quotes, okay? It didn't take much to point out the fact that Kanye West was being anti-Semitic. Kanye West wasn't just being anti-Semitic. Kanye West was was pushing uh, not just a level of like, I'm like, he didn't just go up and say a slur. He went on TV and was pushing for days the most extreme uh, conspiracy theories you can imagine about Jewish people. He was invoking conspiracism on, a, on an unbelievable level. He wasn't just being anti-Semitic. He was pushing an agenda of hate. He was pushing conspiracy theories about Jewish people that we already know were heavily contributed to the, the occurrence of the Holocaust, okay? Genocides, okay? They don't just appear out of nowhere, okay? Whatever anybody believes, whatever uh, whatever anybody feels about the issue, 
they are not just, they don't just, they're not an, like an alien invasion doesn't just happen and then uh, then everybody gets killed. That's not how any of these things work. It's not like in most fiction, okay? Genocides have to be built. Do you understand? Do you understand me? They have to be built piece by piece by piece. This is exactly what we saw happen in Nazi Germany. And I mean it. We saw an increasing uh, popularization of unhinged, anti-Semitic, uh, an homophobic, racist uh, 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 conspiracy theories. And we are seeing this spread all the fuck over the place. And yes, Kanye West is guilty of doing this. It's not, it, it's boiling a frog, but it's more than just boiling a frog, okay? Because it's, the, the heat has been cranked up so fucking high, okay? So fucking high. The heat is, it, it's like the frog has been boiling, okay? And in my debate about the Kanye West situation, people said, the, the main problem that people had with me was, hey, well, Kanye West isn't literally Hitler. Hitler was a chancellor and had more of a say in this. Obviously, none of what I said was ever about uh, literally being Hitler. Uh, that does, that's literally stupid. What a lot of people were basically trying to say is that I am being, uh, I am being racially insensitive by getting mad at Kanye West uh, when like other people are doing racism too. So why do you talk about the black guy doing it and not all the white people doing it? Well, I do actually, which is the, which is the part where that starts to fall apart when they're talking about me because I mostly call out the racism and anti-Semitism of white people. However, Kanye West isn't just a random black guy. Kanye West is one of the most influential, most deeply embedded, and most well-known musicians in the world. And this, right here, is the direct result of his statements, okay? It is important that we hold very hard to task celebrities that use their platform to spread hate, okay? It is a good thing, okay? In this regard, cancel culture or whatever he wants to call it is a very good thing because every single time he opens his mouth to say something anti-Semitic, there are thousands of, of frothing Nazis in his audience that jump to the task to try and recruit everyone they see and they're succeeding, okay? They're succeeding. Kanye West has an incredible, um, incredible, incredible reach, okay? Now, I, being a public figure of some level, I'm a very, very, really tiny public figure. I'm like the public fi figure equivalent of a little tiny bug or a hummingbird. That's me. I'm just a little, little tiny, I'm a little dude. Just a tiny goblin, okay? Um, but I, even I, in my tininess, believe very much in the, in the necessity for people who have a platform, however you get that platform, to be as responsible as possible uh, with that platform. Now, there are some things that are unreasonable to expect from anyone with a platform, because everyone with a platform is still, at the end of the day, a human. Um, we're not gonna get into a broader conversation of, of, of concentrating power into the hands of individual, very fallible humans, but, Obviously, there are limits to anything, but let's just say that uh, spouting anti-Semitic conspiracy theories is so far across the line of what's appropriate to do as somebody with a large uh, uh, platform that it can only it should be interpreted only as an act of hate and hostility, and it needs to be. We need to get serious about this, okay? Because I'm telling you, when Kanye West is given, a, is given a platform, when Kanye West is allowed to go on TV and spread these things to huge audiences, it does create new Nazis. But what's even worse, what's even worse, believe it or not, than the creation of new Nazis, which I think is probably not the main occurrence because I don't think his words convince anybody. 
I do think that people who are, re who are reacting to his words then convince people, but that's a different story. What's worse is it emboldens the ones that currently exist. It convinces them, hey, there's a big guy in power that's on our side. We can push even harder now. We can go and see Kyle in broad daylight on the, on the 405 in fucking LA. And I'm gonna be completely honest. Nazis should not feel safe or comfortable Sieg Heiling and advocating Jewish genocide in, in the broad daylight. They should not feel comfortable. Our society should react very, very harshly to people behaving like this. We should not find that acceptable. It, we should not find a, sta a, a state of, of passive existence in which Nazis feel comfortable Sieg Heiling in broad daylight, that should not be the status quo, okay? But Demon Mama, what about my free speech? Free speech? Free speech doesn't exist, okay? Free speech is, it, well, it doesn't and never will exist, okay? Free speech is an illusion. There, is, there has never been and there never will be a, a world in which all speech is free. I tend to be on the side of free speech by and large, okay? I really do. But I recognize that there is no, there, there is no speech that is 100% free, except when you're in the woods singing to yourself or talking to yourself, because all speech has, has, has reached to some degree, um, and people have a right to react to what you say. If you're saying something to someone, people have a right to react. And of course, there are limitations to what types of reactions are, are justifiable. We, we don't have to go through all, like, you know, through every single step of this process, but, there should be, this is a, I'm making a positive statement here. There should be a hostile reaction to shit like this, okay? This is, it is justified for people to be hostile to people acting like this. And the reason why is because we know what they're angling for. We know what these right-wing people who are saying Kanye was right about the Jews and what Kanye himself are angling for. We've already seen it once in the past. We've already seen this identical, literally word for word in many cases, uh, exact wording used by a party that went on to exterminate millions and millions and millions of Jewish people and trans people and gay people and black people. And that includes people like Kanye West. And it includes anybody, it includes any, any, it doesn't, your, your minority identity does not matter if you are engaging in promoting a worldview uh, uh, held by Nazis. If, if you are pushing a Nazi worldview, a fascist worldview, a worldview that can only result in massive death, if that is what you are pushing, it does not matter what identity you are. It is important that anybody who opposes that world pushes back, okay? People, I, I, I understand why people are hesitant uh, sometimes to call out members of, of certain political minorities. I am a very vocal member of a minority group. I am a very open non-binary trans woman, okay? Um, I, I'm very open about that, okay? And I would hope that if I engaged in, in fucking right-wing rhetoric, that you motherfuckers would call me out. Not just that you motherfuckers, but that my co-content my, my co creators would push back incredibly hard on that. And I, if I can expect that as a tiny little, little, little tiny account on, the, on YouTube, then I think it's perfectly fair that we hold Kanye West to a much, much, much higher standard. And personally, I think that when we start seeing things like this right here, it's time that we start openly and harshly, belligerently, start pushing people who sign off on that uh, out, out, of, out of the public eye. And that includes Kanye West himself.
I think that it would be justified to cancel Kanye West over something like this. As it turns out, actually, yeah. As it turns out, sometimes canceling someone is actually a good thing. We, I've definitely, uh, Morningstar Plural says, yeah, you've definitely built a community that would eat you alive if you were to go off the deep end like that, which is good, which is good. You should. If I ever post anything like what Kanye West posted, Kanye West, like I said, I, I said this at the beginning, I'm gonna reiterate it again just for clarity, Kanye West didn't just do anti-Semitism. Kanye West did anti-Semitism and pushed and popularized, helped popularize, helped normalize the idea of a Jewish, overarching Jewish world conspiracy. That is so, so bad. He exposed his fans to the JQ, which is a thought terminating cliche and lets people justify insane things. Okay, something you all, I want to make, I want to explain to all of you. Um, and I know a lot of you are gonna be familiar with this. A lot of you uh, are pretty familiar with the way that the fascist worldview operates. Um, but fascists and especially Nazis, Nazis being a subgroup of fascists, um, Nazis being a subgroup of fascists, Nazis rely on conspiracy so much. They rely on conspiracy so much. They rely on the idea that they're on, on a, and, and there's a reason for this. It's because it it, it lulls their followers over time. It adjusts their followers to essentially uh, perpetually suspecting a malign influence from the group that they hate at all times. It is a it is a deliberate uh, it is a a deliberate constructing of a of a of a worldview and a belief system. And their belief system, because obviously as any as any rational person knows racists are fucking stupid anti-semites are fucking stupid and transphobes are fucking stupid anybody with like a toddler's level understanding of the world can recognize that any that, that half of the things that racist people say is just genuinely fucking stupid okay like racists will be like yeah uh uh you know uh Fucking, uh, you know, America invented everything, but Africa didn't invent nothing. And you can just go and be like, bro, that's just dead wrong. Like, all, like, like all of humanity originated from Africa originally. Like, what are you fucking, what are you fucking talking about? Like, it, it's, it's shit like that. Boomer racism? I, I don't even know racist talking points. No, I, I'm, I do. Okay, you want me to you want me to tackle an actual uh, racist talking point? Here's one. Ready? Here you go. You guys want it? Here we go. When you talk to a lot of racists, because I've talked to a lot of racists, one thing that they will do all the time is they will say, "Yeah, but uh, and this is the racist talking." They will, yeah, it's the 1350. We're gonna talk about 1350 real quick, okay? 1350 is the meme that racists love to reach for, okay? But it's funny because most of them don't even, they, they memorize the numbers, they don't know anything about what it is that they're saying, and, they're, and where they source their information is subreddits of, that are literally just videos, there, there's like reddits that are just videos of black people committing crimes. So they will, they will hear this, this, this idea, well, 1350, you know, 13% of the population does 50% of the violent crime, which first of all, that statistic is a dated statistic, obviously not that that even matters, they don't give a shit about that. And secondly, obviously, if you are a marginalized community and, and you are literally discriminated against and forced into conflict with other people in your community, obviously you are going, th that community is going to have higher rates of violent crime. How the fuck do you, how the fuck does somebody who's been discriminated against and can't enter uh, and can't own a business, doesn't have any generational wealth, gets discriminated against provably in, in hiring practices, redlining still persists to this day, even though a lot of the laws have been taken off the books, a lot of the practices are still in place. So if you're a black person living, uh, living in a, like a, an impoverished area, 
you probably don't have any intergenerational wealth, you have a harder time getting a job, you're less likely to be accepted by a university, so you're probably less likely to have a college degree. How do you live? And the answer is crime. How else are you gonna fucking survive? That's how anybody does it. It doesn't matter what your skin color is. It's so obviously not about skin color and it's so obviously about socioeconomic conditions imposed because of other people being racist about skin color. And a bunch of racists will come in and they'll say, oh, well, yeah, but I go to this, I went to this subreddit and I saw all these videos, these horrible videos of a black person doing a crime as without ever re recognizing that they're being fed a curated manipulative tube of self-reinforcing stereotypes. This is why poor white areas also have lots of drug crime and other crime associated with it. Of course, poverty is poverty is what causes a rise in violent crime and what causes poverty is discrimination largely that is what causes it if just think about it this way uh, imagine if your life is a giant pachinko machine okay imagine that if you're black there are a bunch of little p little extra things inserted that prevent you from getting to the big to the big scores okay so your little thing is going down bing ding 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 and you're get you're heading towards the bottom and it's like th there's there's a wall over the big win you just can't get the big win sure you might be able to do all you might be able to maximize and hit all the good things on the way down but there's a there's a literal wall placed over it it wasn't, it was only the 60s, okay, that the civil rights movement happened. That means that most, most black Americans to, today, their parents and or grandparents were alive in, in a period of time before the Civil Rights Act had even been put into law and after when it was not even, it hadn't even like, it wasn't able to spread out and be fixed and enforced and, and corrected over time. The, People lived in a period of time where it was literally, you couldn't go into certain restaurants. You were just, you can't come in. You just could not get certain jobs just because of your skin color. Like, holy fuck. How obvious does it have to be? All of this, all of this is, to, is, is specifically to point out the fact that fucking racism is stupid. Racism falls apart under the slightest analysis. And so as a result, it relies on thought terminating cliches and conspiracism. It relies on all kinds of manipulative tactics because it doesn't survive an analysis, any type of stringent analysis, okay? And all of that was to point out that what I was saying before about Kanye West pushing conspiracy theories is fucking dangerous because conspiracy theories are a, they are a, they take advantage of humanity's natural curiosity and natural paranoia, okay? Humans are organic creatures. We spend our whole lives having to contend with sickness, disease, and stress, okay? We are naturally a little paranoid. We, are, we have to be in order to survive. A conspiracy theory grabs onto the part of your brain that produces paranoia, grabs onto the prejudices in your brain, and it pulls you in a direction in such a way that you're less likely to acknowledge the truth. And this is why it's really important to fight off habits of conspiratorial thinking, okay? It's, yes, it's a brain worm generator. It's a, it is a brainworm generator. Now, I'm gonna draw a quick parallel to something I've talked about on this channel a lot, which is, uh, which is religion. And specifically, how I grew up in a far-right Christian cult, okay? And whenever I talk about religion on this channel, I have a lot of things to say about it. But one of the things that, that I experienced as a part of growing up in a very fundamentalist, fundamentalist evangelical environment is this idea that I talk about, about a shell, okay? All right, I talk about how a lot of Christian fundamentalism is building a shell around your brain, a shell of various uh, generally highly emotional, but not always necessarily 
100% emotional, but very emotional uh, ways to prevent you from ingesting uh, certain types of information, okay? So the shell is very hard to crack. And the way that a shell like that is made is by continually exposing someone to thought terminating cliches that become so common that your brain just files them as truth. Even in people who are generally very skeptical. You, you guys ever met somebody who like, uh, okay, okay, here's an example. You guys ever met, met a, uh, uh, a conspiracy theorist uncle who's like super, super Christian and then, and, and, and like, we'll get super offended if you talk about any criticism of the Bible, but then all of the time they're talking about how the government did this, the government did that, the government did this, the government did that. Don't trust the masks because that, yet they will, without question, accept the Bible. And if you even dare criticize the Bible, they won't be skeptical about that. That is, that is a product of what I'm talking about. Conspirator like, like conspiratorial thinking, thought terminating cliches, these things are used to build an egg around your brain so that you have a, 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 a negative reaction to any type of information that conflicts with that. So you never ingest the information at all. Now, sometimes it doesn't work. A lot of people, even people who are deeply indoctrinated, like I was when I was younger, often their, their shell will collapse under its own contradictions. But that's not a reliable process, okay? It's a very, very difficult process to break out of indoctrination. It really, really is. But, or not but, but because of that, because it's such a difficult process, that's why it's done. That's why uh, uh, right-wingers uh, use these buzzwords. They use these same bud buzzwords all the time. They, if you guys go and look at, oh my God, like, have you ever gone and like just listened? I mean, we, I know we have because I've done it here on this stream. When we go and listen to Tucker Carlson, you'll hear him repeat the same buzzwords 10, 15 times in an episode over and over and over and over again. And they're like literally the same phrasing. All political messaging has you know, themes and recurring concepts, but it's ridiculous. It's so blatant how far right-wing media goes to, re to reinforce things. I mean, hell, you guys know, uh, let me talk about one that's personal. Uh, the the 41% 41, 41 statistic, which is a dog whistle, by the way. Um, uh, the 41% is a anti-trans uh, dog whistle, basically, when people say 41% with referring to trans people, they're talking about a old study, which is no longer accurate, first of all, that stated that 41% of trans people will attempt suicide, okay? Um, that meme is, is repeated constantly in right-wing spaces, constantly. The 41% meme is repeated. They never really go into depth. They just say, yeah, you know, 41% of trans people will kill themselves. Yeah, you know, and they'll say that over and over and over again. And they never talk about where that statistic comes from. They never talk about the sources. It's just repeated over and over and over again until it's so common that their viewers accept it as a passive fact of existence. They never even think to interrogate it. And this is, this is the shit that I'm yelling about right here. This is the fucking shit. It's this, it's this environment that smooths the brains into these nice little shells that are ready to do a goddamn genocide. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's what all of this was about. You remember me talking about that before? You remember me talking about how a genocide has to be built? That's what this is all about. It all ties back to that. That's the goal. What do you think Nazis want? What do you think the conspiracy theories are advocating for? They're just asking questions. They're getting people ready. They're getting them emotionally charged so that they'll look the other way or stay silent. Keep in mind that Nazis don't need an entire Nazi society to pull off a genocide. They don't. All they need is a society that is, that is, that is at the very least, uh, at the very least apathetic. A society that's willing to go, well, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe, hmm, I don't know, maybe though, 
Uh, mm, but really, that's all they need. That's all they need. The reason why I've made such a big stink about Kanye West's fucking shitty anti-Semitism is because Kanye West is a hugely influential figure. And he was he's normalizing anti-Semitism. That is literally what he's doing. The, the, the definition of normalization. It is a big popular figure going onto TV, being given a platform all over the place to spread hate to spread hate that leads to death. When things become, when, when abhorrent things become normalized, our society becomes, it's not even just about society. Normalization is a weird thing, okay? Human psychology is very strange, okay? We can get used to some pretty demented shit, okay? Uh, I mean, God, when, think about it like this. If you, if you were to like look back into the past, Imagine what it would have been like to live in New York City in like the 1910s when people were still like chucking their chamber pots out the fucking windows into the street, like throwing your garbage out the window and like people just had to cope with that. And they did because that was what they had to live with to live, okay? Um, so normalization is a thing that we have to be able to do to a certain degree. Our brains have to be able to get used to certain things. But as you can imagine, getting used to certain things can lead us to some very dark and horrifying existences. There are all kinds of things in our lives right now that are, that are, uh, uh, that are normalized that should absolutely not be. And there are some things that are attempting to become normalized. And if they become normalized, if we get to a society, do you guys really, do you really want to live in a society where fucking people, fucking Nazis feel comfortable Sieg Heiling and, 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 and harassing Jewish people in public, in broad daylight? Is that the type of society that we want to live in? And if the answer is no, then we have to start asking ourselves, what the fuck are we going to do about it? And at least for me, I, I, I'm I'm a I'm a an edutainer on the internet. I'm a YouTuber. I yell about stuff. I talk about things. I shine the light on things and I get some people talking about it and I make jokes. So for me, I know I'm going to make fun of these motherfuckers. I'm going to be mean as fuck. I'm going to take down these Nazi fascist motherfuckers and make them feel embarrassed, make them hide their face, make them run away and feel embarrassed and lose standing. I'm going to just I'm going to do everything I can to make them look as stupid as shit. Okay? But that's not enough. We need basically everyone possible to denounce this shit as hard as possible. Because, like I said, you don't have to get to a society that's 80% Nazi to, to have something horrible happen. All you need is, a, is, is enough people that feel bold enough that they can organize in the daytime and they can do a lot of harm. Yeah, exactly. It's like a cancer. You don't need to be made out of half of cancer to die from it. You only need a little bit. And it is cancerous. Don't ever... You, you, the, the right wing call, saying, oh, the left calls everyone a Nazi, really did some serious damage to our collective brains. Because it's made everyone feel like hesitant to call out fucking anti-Semitism and to call out Nazism. No, be bold. These people suck. Pe racists fucking suck. Transphobes fucking suck. They're horrible people. They make life bad. Racists, anti-Semites, transphobes, homophobes. These people suck. They're horrible. They take their shitty, bigoted views and they make everyone else live life their way or else. They make everyone uncomfortable. They can't live in harmony with others. Fuck that shit. You are not wrong for pushing back against that. At all. No one is.